Magandang araw po muli sa bawat isa at ito po ang ating ikalabing tatlo na installment sa ating may simpag-aaral sa Biblical Theology. Sa ating ikalabing tatlo na installment ay tayo magkakaroon ng review mula sa talakay natin sa mga previous lessons ang Aklat ng Judges hanggang sa 1st and 2nd Kings. Ang nilalaman ng review lesson na ito, unang-una yung timeline ng Judges hanggang sa 1st and 2nd Kings. Tapos mag-explore tayo ng the theological themes mula sa Judges at 1st and 2nd Kings. Then we would explore some thematic, yung chaotic na structure mula sa Joshua hanggang sa 1st and 2nd Kings. Then as a means of conclusion, ay titingnan natin yung mga kings and kingdom sa ancient times and how it relates to our modern times. Dahil nga ang usapin na ito ay sa United Kingdom, yung ibig sabihin yung kaharian mula in transition mula sa mga tribes hanggang patungo sa kaharian hanggang mawala ang kaharian ng Israel. Gaya ng ating mga napag-aralan ng karaan, meron sa chronology or sa timeline na natawag na early and late na dating. Ito yung nakabase sa kung ano ang subscribe natin na dating sa account ng Exodus. So for the sake of discussion ay i-display natin, ipapakita natin yung timeline mula sa judges ng early and late Exodus. At ito nga ay magsasama o mag magkakaroon ito ng magiging paral nito, mag-iisa na ito pag panahon na ni Saul kaya ito po yung time ng Judges in the early Exodus at ito naman yung panahon ng Judges sa late Exodus na tinatawag Then after ng Judges ay magra-rise up na ito si Saul at ito yung kanyang quick timeline. Makita natin sa bandang baba sa 1050, yung panahon na 1050 BC, dito nga ay makukuronahan na si Saul bilang unang hari ng Israel. Si Haring Saul nga ay masabi natin na unang hari at siya nga ay nag inang 40 years therefore at ang sumunod sa kanya si David si David ay nagreign mula noong 1010 BC ito yung makikita natin sa arrow dito sa image na ito sa bandang itaas then si David bilang pangalawang hari ng Israel ay nagreign ng 40 years siya ay sinundan ni Solomon ang kanyang anak na nagsimula maghari noong 970 BC at nga ay sa pagkakataon na ito Matapos ang paghahari ni Solomon for 40 years din, sa 930 BC ay magkakaroon na ng, ng civil war kung saan maghihiwalay ang bansang Israel into two different nations. At noong time na 930 BC mula sa isang unified at end united na kaharian, dahil nagkaroon nga ng paghiwalay ang Israel at ang Judah, ito yung kanyang timeline. So, kings of the divided monarchy. Mga sa taas ay makita natin ng Israel, ang northern kingdom. At sa baba naman, ito yung Judah o yung southern kingdom. At ito yung pagpapatuloy na kanilang timeline. Sumula sa 930 BC, ang northern kingdom ng Israel at ang southern kingdom ng Judah ay naghiwalay. At unti-unti nga mula dito sa divided kingdom na ito ay dahil sa kasalanan sila ay mapuput into exile. Makita natin sa susunod na slide or yung graphic timeline kung, ang kanila, kung sino or anong pecha ang kanilang pagbagsak. Ang Northern Kingdom ng Israel ay bumagsak noong 722 BC sa pamamagitan ng mga Assyrians. So even though North, the Northern Kingdom ay nakuha ng Assyria, nagpatuloy pa rin mag-exist ang Judah o yung Southern Kingdom for several centuries more. Ang Southern Kingdom ng Judah ay nagtagal hanggang 586 BC na kung saan siya naman ay na-conquer ng Babylonians. So, 
na unang bumagsak ang Northern Kingdom na Israel, 722 BC, 586 BC naman ay bumagsak itong Judah sa kamay ng mga Babylonians. At mula sa isang presentation ng pictures ng kanilang timeline ay magsuzoom in naman tayo sa epoch na sumasakop dito sa time ng Judges to 1st and 2nd Kings. At ang una nga nito ay epoch number 4 na kung saan ito itinatawag na from tribes to a nation. Ito yung nagmula ng 1200 BC hanggang 930 BC. At isa-isa rin natin yung mga aklat na ating tinalakay sa review na ito. Simulan natin ito sa Judges. Ang judges, uh, sila ay mga redeemer, savior, deliverer. At sila nga dapat ay mag-lead dito sa mga tribo ng Israel. Pero makita natin sa dulo ng judges, the Israelites. Israel committed the atrocity of killing one another as they descend on the tribe of Benjamin. So pinatay na nila yung tribo ng Benjamin. So the end of judges is disastrous for Israel. They are violating God's law and their covenant with God in ways unimaginable. At hindi lamang yan, sapagkat yung mga libita mismo, kung ako saan sila dapat yung mag-lead sa worshiping God, they are now the ones who are leading them in worshiping idols. They have become corrupt morally, becoming Sodom and Gomorrah. And they have ceased struggling to drive out the Canaanites and instead becoming like the Canaanites and they annihilated their own. They are worshiping idols at pinatay pa nila ang kanilang kapatid. Ito yung ending ng Judges. Ang susunod na aklat na sakop nitong epoch number 4 ay ang aklat ng Ruth na kung saan makita natin. Ito may transition from Naomi to Ruth to David. Ito yung genealogy na kung saan makikita natin yung very essence or connection sa redemptive history ng aklat ng Ruth is the genealogy of David. So God has worked behind the scenes through two humble women and one faithful man to start the process of raising up a mighty redeemer, David. Nalahanin natin sa judges, they are supposedly the redeemer, deliverer, but they have failed miserably. God is working behind the scenes sa mga mga sitwasyon na ito to raise up a mighty redeemer in the form of David at si David ay magkakaroon lamang na sa katuparan sa pamamagitan ng genealogy tracing back to Naomi to Ruth at kay dito kay Boaz sakop din ng epoch number 4 ang aklat ng 1 Samuel na kung saan magkakaroon umli na another transition una una from corrupt priest or priesthood patungo sa corrupt na king the transition from judges to monarchy to your first 15 chapters ng first samuel but not only that from a priesthood to a king o yung judges to a monarchy ay magkakaroon rin ng decline dito sa unang hari ng Israel si Saul laban sa pagtaas o pag ni David ito yung second ng first samuel sa 2 Samuel, makikita natin doon the rise of David and the restoration of Israel. In a way, mayuunify niya ang Israel mula dito sa very corrupt na leader na si Saul. But being as it may, si Haring David, bagamat siya mighty deliverer, he had a great fall. Ito yung Batsiba affair sa 2 Samuel chapters 11 and 12. At dahil dito, merong consequences ang kasalanan na kung saan yung kaharian niya, unified na kingdom niya ay unti-unti na mag-unravel. Ito yung mga final chapters, chapters 13 to 20 ng aklat na 2 Samuel. So now we come to the next epoch, epoch number 5, the fall of two nations. So this is 930 BC hanggang 586 BC yung pagbagsak ng Southern Kingdom ng Judah. Ang unang aklat na nasasakop nito ay ang 1 Kings na kung saan pinapakita sa atin yung contradiction ni Solomon bagamat sabihin na natin siya yung napakahusay naroon yung kanyang splendor pero naroon rin ang kanyang apostasy ito yung first 11 chapters ng first kings and also not only that dahil nga merong consequence ang kasalanan it is now reversing the conquest and dismantling the empire kung babalikan natin sa Joshua ay they, nagsimula yun sa isang conquest sa lupa 
Ngayon naman ay nire-reverse na ito. No? Kung saan yung lupa ay unti-unti na inaalis sa kaharian or inaalis ang kaharian sa lupa but more so yung mga tao mismo ay itatanggalin na dito sa lupa. Ito makita natin sa 1 Kings chapters 12 to 16 and also God sends prophets to confront the corrupt monarchy. Nagsisimula ito sa mga hari. Corrupt ang mga supposedly leaders nila, deliverers, at inaaki nila yung kanila mga sinasakupan tunga sa further corruption. Ito yung magiging transition ng 1 Kings hanggang sa 2 Kings. Ang huling aklat ay sa 2 Kings. Ito ay nasa Epoch 5 pa rin. Sinumula na ito sa sinasabi nga ng iba ng disruption sa flow na story sa pamamagitan ng dalawang propeta. Ang propeta na si Elisha, yung kanyang ministry, na kung saan ito yung nagbibridge sa 1 Kings hanggang sa 2 Kings. At makikita natin dito yung masalimuot na event, the last days of Israel sa chapters 8 hanggang chapter 17. And the last days of Judah sa chapters 18 hanggang chapter 25. So, makita natin sa 2 Kings. Dito bumagsak ang Northern Kingdom na Israel, 722 BC. At ng Southern Kingdom na Judah, 586 BC. And now, after natin mag-zoom in sa mga aklat, titingnan natin yung kanilang theological themes na tinuturo sa atin o marahil na pinapakita sa atin mula sa Judges hanggang sa 1 and 2 Kings. Sa unang lecture natin ng review, nung introduction hanggang sa Joshua, ay ginamit natin yung ibang tema naman, yung ibang lente, na lente ng salvation through judgment. At ito rin yung gagamitin natin sa ating mga review lectures dito sa Judges 2, First and Second Kings. Sabi nga ni James Hamilton Jr., the theological center of the prophets is the glory of God in salvation through judgment. Through judgment, Of the exile, however, comes purging that leads to salvation. Yahweh glorifies Himself in His justice and in His steadfast mercy. So, mula natin ang tema na ito sa Judges. Maita natin that mula kay Joshua, Joshua succeeded Moses, but no one succeeds Joshua. At ang kanilang utos, yung conquest ng land, is to banish out the inhabitants. Pero hindi naman lahat ito ay ginawa nila. Not all the land was conquered, nor were all its inhabitants put to ban. Sabi nga ni James Hamilton muli, If Adam was undone by one unclean serpent, the presence of so many unclean seed of the serpent bodes ill for the seed of the woman. Ito makikita natin because failure to drive out yung mga inhabitants ng Canaan, it will result to eventually dismantling of the conquest of Canaan. At hindi lamang yun, Judges depicts a progressive deterioration of the situation of Israel. Progressive, unti-unti, nag-deteriorate, nagkukurap, nadidiki, at nasisira yung kanilang sitwasyon, lalo-lalo na morally and spiritually. Meron tayong makikita na clear pattern sa account ng Judges. Ang simula ng pattern na ito is that Israel did evil in the eyes of Yahweh and magpapatuloy ito sa response ni Yahweh magbibigay siya ng ibibigay niya itong Israel to an enemy sa kamay ng isang kalaban and Yahweh hears their cries and raises a mighty deliverer to save them so once a judge delivers Israel the land ay magkakaroon ng kapahingahan rest timayta natin sa Judges 3 verses 11 and 30 Judges 5 verse 31 Judges 8 and 30 or 8 verse 30 Itong kapahingahan na ito ay na-enjoy, na lupa. It also resonates God's rest upon the completion of His work. Ito ay parang anino ng Eden. Then we come to the end of Judges. Na kung saan ito ay parang isang refrain ng awitin. The refrain at the end of Judges is that there was no king in Israel and as a result, everyone is doing what is right in his own eyes. So, pinapakita sa atin ng impression that Israel's king was to restrain the evil of the people by enforcing the law of Yahweh. Kagaya nga na stipulation ng Deuteronomy chapter 17 verses 18 to 20. Next up ay tignan natin yung tema na salvation through judgment dito sa aklat ni Ruth. Nagsimula ito na nabanggit doon na mayroong famine. Ang famine ito ay isang curse sa lupa. So, mayroong famine. And this famine results in a family from Bethlehem leaving the promised land. 
ito ay pinagbabawal din sapagkat yung biyaya ng Diyos ay nakatali dito sa lupa, yung lupang pangako. The Israelite sons marrying Moabite women is also against the Mosaic prescription. So, ito yung makikita natin na may sumpa sa lupa, tapos ang isang pamilya ay nilisan yung kanilang yung, yung pangakong lupa at yung kanilang mga anak ay nakipag-intermarry sa mga pagano point being is this, makita natin na bagamat, uh, sabi natin ito yung epekto ng sumpa so as Yahweh reverses the curse on the land and barrenness of Ruth ang lalanan natin si Ruth siya ay Moabite woman na napangasawa ng anak ni Naomi and sabi nga doon they were in the land for 10 years so sabi na natin 10 years na ito si, si Ruth ay hindi sila nakakanak but also Yahweh is sustaining the line of descent from which the promised seed would come. So, bagamat barren yung kanyang womb ay dito pala sa pamamagitan ni Ruth ay ang genealogy ng hindi lamang ng pangakong deliverer, pangakong hari but more importantly yung pangako na seed dito sa ang kung tawag na ay proto-evangelium so through judgment salvation comes Yahweh gives conception to Ruth Boaz, fathers Obed who fathers Jesse through whom David comes and Yahweh's glory shines in the plan of redemption for his people sa pagpapatuloy tingnan natin yung tema na salvation through judgment in 1st and 2nd Samuel the narrative of 1st and 2nd Samuel focuses on three major figures in the story. Si Samuel, si Saul, at si David. Samuel is the last judge of Israel. At makita natin sa first eight chapters na 1st Samuel. Who then anoints Israel's first king, si Saul. And Saul is followed by David. So the account of Samuel includes his barren mother's prayer for his birth. Yung pagpapanganak dito sa kanyang magiging ama, anak at kasunod doon yung judgment sa house ni Eli ito yung uh, dapat nga na nangunguna sa Israel at na meron nga anak ito si Eli na sabi na natin very na pasaway and Yahweh calling Samuel into his and in response to the people's request for a king Samuel prophesied that the king would be wicked ito yung makita natin sa chapter 8 verses 1 to 22 and King Saul comes as a judgment against Israel but mercifully and in the mystery of providence of God Yahweh uses this judgment dito kay Saul to save his people ito makita natin sa chapter 11 of 1 Samuel and then through the judgment of Saul he raises up David to shepherd them so makita natin meron salvation through judgment and the kingdom is united around David and Yahweh makes a covenant with him but then a terrible incident with Bathsheba unleashes judgment upon David's house David repents of his sin but the sword will never depart from his house ito yung makita natin sa chapter 12 verse 10 so bagamat na naroon nga yung paghahatol pero ito yung ginagamit ng Diyos para sa salvation ng kanyang mga tao so in spite of all of this Yahweh remains merciful the glory of Yahweh is rightly summed at the conclusion of Samuel in response to the manifestation of God's glory in salvation through judgment sa Dabitic Covenant to 2 Samuel chapter 7 yung emphasis ni Haring David sa verses 20 to 22 is on the Lord's mercy it is also reminiscent of Yahweh's statement to Moses that he shows mercy and compassion to whomever he pleases. Ito yung binagit niya kay Moses sa Exodus 33 verse 19. At ganito rin yung emphasis ni David. The Lord is compassionate and merciful on whom he pleases. So Yahweh is merciful, yes, but he is not indulgent towards sin. Pagkamat siya mahabagin, he will not let sin unpunished. Yahweh is loving and patient, but Yahweh is not unjust, matwid ng Diyos. And through judgment, David's sin has been addressed. His repentance and reliance upon Yahweh results in, in mercy. God then is glorified through judgment. 
And lastly, tingnan natin yung tema na salvation through judgment sa 1st and 2nd Kings. 1st Kings begins with David still on the throne but near death. Solomon receives a divine gift of wisdom to reign righteously. He builds the temple, then has his heart turned away by his many wives. Ito yung makita natin sa chapters 3 to 11 na 1st Kings. So the kingdom is split after Solomon and the slow march toward exile and in spite of the efforts ng mga mabubuting tao na Diyos na kagaya na lamang ni Elijah and ni Elisha he arrives at the destruction of the northern kingdom of Israel in 722 BC ito yung makikita natin yung transition dito sa 1st Kings chapter 12 hanggang 2nd Kings chapter 17 Judah continues in the land and experiences some sort of revival pero kahit ganun pa man ang talaga, yung wickedness talaga nila eh, sila bumabalik dito sa kanilang wickedness and eventually they fell to the Babylonians in 586 BC and is exiled from the land ito yung huling pitong kabanata sa 2nd Kings also another thing to note is that at the beginning of Kings Israel is in the land sila yung nasa lupain pa her wisest king ruling over them to si Solomon the wisest of all at ngayon tinayo niya yung templo na, ng Diyos. So at the end of Kings, God's justice has been visited. The people are in exile and the temple has been destroyed. So baliktad na baliktad. Wala na nga silang hari, wala na sila sa lupa at yung templo na ginawa ni Solomon para sa Diyos ay sira na rin. God has kept His promises and in His freedom, He has judged His wayward people the point being is this kings ends with hope for the future hope that through the judgment of the exile salvation will come for the glory of God ang tinuturo ng kings ay ang reliability ng salita ng Diyos, salita ni Yahweh showing that those who reject the word are judged while those who rely on it are saved Yahweh shows mercy by forgiving those who repent of their sin and delivering those who call on him but his judgment still falls Yahweh is faithful to his word to the truth and to the covenant he made kaya nga makita na lamang natin yung tema na um, nagpo-flow dito the truth's judgment salvation will come At ngayon ay quickly tingnan natin yung chiastic structure ng Joshua to Kings. Chiastic ibig sabihin, um, pwede natin ito makita bilang uh, pa-X na structure. Kung saan yung umpisa na sa first part ay siya rin yung magiging makikita in a way sa ending. So tingnan natin sa Joshua. Balikan natin sa glit yung Joshua. Ano, ano ba nangyari dito sa Joshua? Sila ay sumunod sa salita ng Diyos at sinimulan nila yung conquest ng pangakong lupa. Pagdating ng Judges, there were no king at rampant nga yung wickedness. Pagdating sa Samuel, binigyan sila ng hari, si Haring Saul at si Haring David. At pagdako ng kings, makita natin na pabaliktad na yung nangyari dito sa Joshua. They are now disobedient and were exiled from the land. So from obedience to conquest, from no king to rampant wickedness to giving them a king, and eventually a king who unifies them and rules with righteousness pero bagamat righteous si David siya ay tao pa rin at sa pamamagitan ng kanyang kasalanan ay unti-unti nag-unravel ang kanyang kaharian at eventually lumabas rin ang laman na puso ng mga Israelita from the top to the bottom they are disobedient to the word of God and thus they were exiled from the land At bilang pagtatapos ng ating lecture number 13, yung ating short review ng Judges hanggang sa 1st and 2nd Kings, dahil Kings ang pinag-uusapan at natapos tayo sa kaharian at mga hari, Kings by definition rules a kingdom of which citizens of the kingdom submit to its laws and under its care. Ito yung kaharian, yung kingdom. At yung citizens ay nagpapasailalim sa batas ng kaharian at ang hari nga ay nagpoprotekta sa kanyang mga tao. So by this, titingnan natin sa ancient times, kings of, and kingdom in ancient times and how it relates to our modern time today. 
So, kings and kingdom in ancient times. That maging maliwanag sa atin. That the primary purpose of 1st and 2nd Samuel is to record the establishment of the kingship in Israel. This event is a pivotal moment in the unfolding of God's revelational history. First thing to note is that the kingship is, in the first place, an initial fulfillment of ancient prophecy. God revealed to the patriarchs that kings would descend from them. Ito ay kung babalikan natin yung Abrahamic covenant sa Genesis chapter 17. Nabanggit ito sa verse 6 and 16 at ito inulit muli sa chapter 35 verse 11. So the great promise that Jacob gives to his son Judah and his descendants is that the scepter will not depart from the tribe of Judah. The kingship will reach its climax in a supreme ruler who will one day come from Judah. Ito nga sa Genesis chapter 49 verse 10, yung blessing ni Jacob. So secondly, instituting a monarchy in Israel is clearly consistent with God's plan and will for his people. And the type of kingship that Israel is to have is a theocratic monarchy in which Israel has a human king who obeys the Lord, the ultimate sovereign king. Ito nga yung nakalagay rin or na a record sa Deuteronomy chapter 17 verses 14 and 20. Thirdly, there is nothing intrinsically wrong with the elders requesting a king. Ito nga yung nangyari sa 1 Samuel 8 chapter 8 na kung saan humingi sila ng hari, nagre-request sila na magkaroon ng hari. Pero ilang bagay ang tingnan natin. Una-una, the problem is there for a king like the other nations have rather than the one who is part of a theocratic monarchy submitted to the Lord. By desiring an autonomous human king, in effect, they have rejected sa 1 Samuel chapter 8 verse 7 na kung saan ang nire-reject nila ay si Yahweh. Saul, the first king of Israel, turns out to be the type of king that Samuel had warned against. Siya oppressive, demanding, and above all, self-centered itong si Saul. David initially fulfills what God has promised his people as he is from Judah and after God's own heart. Ito yung makikita natin kay David. He is a man after God's own heart. So 1 Samuel chapter 13 verse 14. And second thing na makita natin dito is that monarchy ay hindi ito right. It is not a right but a God-given task with conditions attached and articulated in the covenants. Meron kaakibat tong obligasyon sa tipan ng Diyos. David instructs Solomon on what God expects of him and the risk to, to the dynasty of not pleasing God. Ito yung warning ni David kay Solomon sa 1 Kings chapter 2 verses 1 to 4. And fourth thing to note sa king and kingdom in ancient times is that faithfully obeying the Mosaic law is the condition Israel must meet for God to remain with them and ensure a king, the king a long prosperous reign. The judgment on Solomon is due to his failure to meet those demands. Ito yung makita natin sa 1 Kings chapter 11, yung failure ni Solomon na imit itong demands ng Mosaic law. The same conditions apply to God's promise of dynasty for Jeroboam. Si Jeroboam siya unang hari na northern kingdom. Ito is uh, 1 Kings chapter 11. And ang kanyang pamumuno also ends in judgment sapagkat hindi nga niya sinunod ng mga nakasad doon. And all Israel is responsible for the same disobedience that ended in national doom. Ito sa 2 Kings chapter 17 verses 15 to 17 na hindi lamang yung hari but also yung buong Israel. And also praises for those who are keeping the Torah kagaya na lamang ni Josiah ng Judah. Na kung saan binabalik niya na yung mga tao hindi kahit niya na bumalik sa salita ng Diyos and praises are due to him. The point being is that through all the, though all the kings of both Israel and Judah were compared to David, David's kingship also points forward to the final 
Messianic King. Ito ay inuulit o pinapaalala sa pamamagitan na lang ng mga awit, Psalm 2, Psalm 72, and Psalm 110. So the Lord promises David that his offspring would sit on the throne of Israel forever and that his son will build a temple for the Lord. Ito yung pangako ng Diyos kay Haring David sa 2 Samuel chapter 7 verses 12 to 16. <coughs> bagamat nga ito ay pangako, ito ay tipan, ito ay kagampanan ng Diyos. At bagamat nagkaroon nga ng anak si Haring David na si Solomon na siyang gumawa na templo but ultimately since this seed or offspring of David will be in the throne of Israel forever signifying yung kanyang righteousness na walang hanggan, eh, hindi mawawala sa kanya yung paghahari and also with that yung care niya sa kanya mga citizens, sa kanya mga people and this points out to us that this king, this promised king is messianic in nature ibig sabihin hindi lamang ito deliverer but ultimately our savior our redeemer mula sa epekto ng kasalanan at inlalayo tayo sa epekto ng sumpa at ngayon tayo mag transition sa ating modern times sa ating panahon ngayon first thing to note is that the old testament covenant community took the form of a nation sa ng isang bansa nakita natin dito sa ating review ng transition nila mula sa confederation of tribes sa judges at unti-unti nagkaroon sila ng hari nagkaroon sila ng kaharian at nagkaroon, naging unified ang kanilang uh, kingdom under the rule of a king so it is a form of a nation The church and the state converge in the same community. Ito yung makikita natin sa kaharian ni David at ni Solomon. So, nakatali yung cultic. Cultic meaning yung worship, yung religious worship, dun sa bansa, sa interest of the state. So, we can see here or we can drive, derive a point that the New Testament church is no longer a nation but a community that transcends nations na narito na ang mga Hudyo at mga Hentil hindi lamang necessarily na of, of Israel lang the state is ordained by God ito yung nilagay ng Diyos para mamuno sa mga tao tanda natin Jews and Gentiles no longer specifically a nation but transcends nations the state is for the purpose of justice and social order citizens, kasama na dyan yung mga kristyano, are to submit in the state authority the state can become abusive of its power, that's a reality and there are two separate claims to Caesar and of God kung saan pinapahita sa atin ni Jesus that each claim has its authority that belongs to it, so ito yung mga maging malinaw sa atin sa ating modern times, lalo lalo na looking back at New Testament era na kung saan ang community ng people of God it does not comprise a singular nation under a singular king hindi na sila under a theocratic monarchy secondly as God's people are of different national citizenships at sila nga ay merong respective kings so yung rulers above them na may maalalahanan o paalalahanan tayo that no matter how good or ill our highest officials are hindi sila yung messianic king never na papantay o lalapit sila sa messianic king lalo lalo na kung tayo ngayon nagkiklaim bilang tao ng Diyos love for country has its place however the cult of personality cult of personality ibig sabihin yung follower na isang tao radical follower na isang tao the cult of personality in the shade of patriotism not only lets the flag drop dead to the ground but also throws the soul to the grave by blindly following their desired redeemers recently nakita natin yung nangyari sa United States na kung saan ang supporters na ni Trump ay sinugod yung Capitol even those who claim to be Christians who are not 
knowing kung bakit nila ginagawa iyon. So, ito yung makita natin this is a very evidence of cult of personality. At sabi nga sa Proverbs chapter 29 verse 26, Many seek the face of a ruler, but it is from the Lord that a man gets justice. So, ito yung pagpapag na tayo ay hindi dapat under a cult of personality not seeking the face of a ruler but it is from the Lord our messianic king that a man gets justice thirdly with all the fanaticism to rulers of sorts nandyan na yung political rulers social rulers or even worse yung of religious flavor lahat ng mga tao na yan, lahat ng mga rulers na yan are in Adam. The depth of depravity may vary, but political authorities are still in the realm of God's common grace. Tandaan natin na in-institute ang mga gobyerno para sa ito yung sila mamuno to serve justice and social order and among everything, yung, yung uh, well-being na kanila citizens ang pinuput forward. Yan ay common grace, nasa rim na common grace. And that is not salvific. Hindi ka maliligtas ng iyong political ruler. So, some rulers may exhibit great knowledge or decisive leadership in certain matters, but do not be surprised in other aspects, especially of morality. Isang sabi na natin na nag-exert ng leadership ay sa panahon natin ngayon and at maraming tumitingala sa kanya ay ang leader ng New Zealand or leader ng Canada pero bagamat sila nga sabi na natin ay of good repute sa mga tao at yun decisive yung kanilang leadership stance one way or another in the aspect of morality nasaan ba ang Canada at nasaan ang New Zealand they are very highly secular So, sabi nga ni John Calvin, when God wants to judge a nation, He gives them wicked rulers. So, ito yung isang form ng judgment ang wicked rulers. Ito yung sinasalamin din ng ating napag-aralan sa 1st and 2nd Samuel at lalo-lalo na sa 1st and 2nd Kings and even do sa judges. So, the point being here, the point being is that in light of the curse, of sin in this fallen creation bagamat naroon yung sumpa ng kasalanan dito sa fallen creation na ito there is still hope in salvation through judgment our hope is only in the king of kings and lord of lords our messianic king our lord our redeemer our savior our deliverer Jesus Christ at bilang pagtatapos ay maiiwan ko po sa inyo ang Proverbs chapter 2 verses 21 to 22 wherein it says for the upright will inhabit the land and those with integrity will remain in it but the wicked will be cut off from the land and the treacherous will be rooted out of it ibig sabihin lamang na ang mga matatweet nagiging tweet tayo sa pamamagitan lamang ng pananampalataya sa ating messianic king sa ating messianic ruler deliverer and savior our Redeemer. In that sense, we will be upright. At hindi lupa, physical na lupa ang ating i-inhabit, but the coming new heaven and new earth. And those who are wicked, yung mga hindi sumusunod, very disobedient, wayward, kagaya ng ating nabaliktanawan dito sa Judges to 1st and 2nd Kings. Hindi lamang wicked kings, but also wicked people they will be cut off from the land and they will be rooted out of it. Sila aalisin doon sa pangakong lupa na kung saan hinihikahit nga mga mananampalatay to strive and enter that rest. Salamat po muli at nawa ay nag-benefit kayo dito sa ating short review ng Judges hanggang sa 1st and 2nd Kings. Magandang araw po muli.